Good evening and welcome to the shop. Have you wondered how to make sh regular shaker furniture modern looking with a simple technique? Well, I'm going to show you that. I'm sure you've been up nights thinking about that. But we've got a little class going on this week where we've been doing a lot of this technique. So tonight is one of those unusual nights where we're in front of a live studio audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're amazing and they're making amazing progress on this project here as part of our week-long class on the round chair this is uh, one a prototype I made a few years ago but we've got we've got chairs sticking up all over the place here in the in the class and we've got one more day to bring it on home so looking forward to that tomorrow but all of this We've been doing this treatment to these legs called pillowing, where we've been shaping the surface that takes it out of the flat and gives it kind of a soft, organic look. And it's a super easy, fast technique, right, everyone? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no sorry. Problem. <laughs> it has its learning curve, but uh, I want to show you tonight how easy and simple it can be uh, and we're going to apply it to a our shaker end table course we just wrapped that course up look check it out this table here remember this table how sweet this is this is actually a great fundamental beginner course if you want to uh, dip your toes into the woodworking world this is a great project to tackle and by the way you can check out all this on epicwoodworking.com but don't leave now and check that out stay here where we're now what i'm going to do is take a very similar part similar parts and and just treat one of these legs with the pillowing technique and see if we see any difference i sure hope so this is going to be a long night <laughs> so here so you can see this is the same leg and it's got the flat surfaces and this is a technique i learned from one of the guys in the new hampshire furniture masters association that i've been part of for 25 something years and furnituremasters.org if you want to check that out yes mm -hmm. awesome work on there but in particular jerry osgood and ted blatchley probably went strongest on this method on their work and the first time I saw it I thought what in the world what did they do to that and it wasn't that big of a deal but it it just changed it you know you when you get used to flat surfaces when you see a more dynamic uh, slightly radius surface it's more natural it's more like what we see around us in the world every day you don't see growing things that are flat typically so Jerry Osgood, uh, I've worn this out saying this, but he's known for having the saying that a straight line is a missed opportunity. And you would see that in his work. And I think he'd also say a flat surface is a missed opportunity. So he was always trying to make things unflat. And that's what we want to do today. And so just to take an ordinary table and push it to the unflat. Now, before I do this, I'm all of all I'm going to do is make a soft radius on this surface. So all the way down the leg. And the way I'll do it is mark it out. So I'll mark out the apex of this very soft curve that's going to run down the whole leg. And this is just kind of a rough thing. I just hold my finger against the stock and just push it down, keeping it roughly centered all the way and just turn your hand or whatever works for you and it's just a reference line so there's the center of my leg now i want to mark on each side how deep i'll be going with the curve i like to go about three thirty seconds of an inch <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it sounds, sounds pretty particular completely but logical. A sixteenth's not too much an eighth's too much <laughs> so i'm going to just make a line right about three thirty seconds of an inch and i'll make it as dark as i can so you can see it and i'm not going to go the full depth down here where the leg gets narrower the pillowing 
lightens up a little bit too. So we'll come up here, same thing. I'm sure my live studio audience is so excited to see this again. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've been toiling on those, on this curved parts and they are hard cherry. So it's really testing, bringing out their best. So here it is, it's marked out. This is just one face. We would mark out usually the opposite face and do both uh, consecutively. So you're not stopping a lot for that. And for things like this that are, have good solid ends, I like to put it in the vise using a bar clamp. So you can use this if you have a spacer for this type of vise. I just stick a spacer in there. And that kicks the bar clamp away so that the the clamping head and tail can slide freely. Let's see. So I just get a bite on it. It's just about an inch thick. Depends what your bar clamps are like and how high your vise is as to how you'd make it. But that's it. So now I'm just going to get a grab on it end to end. And wood's pretty strong in this dimension, so you can put a good little pressure on it. Crack! <laughs> <laughs> Always think that's going to happen. Who knows? It might. All right, so here's the progression. Let me show you some tools. This, this will be our first, if you want to look out on the bench. Okay. <laughs> this is a spoke shade, and it's, it will remove material quickly. It's like a beefed up industrial uh, vegetable peeler, right? <laughs> Except it's made to cut wood, but it peels easily, almost like peeling vegetables when it's well tuned. And here will be the follow-up, a fine rasp. So this will leave some faceting. The rasp will soften and clean those up. But it's like an aggressive sandpaper almost because of the coarse nature of it. So we'll follow that up with a file. The file will remove the deeper scratches from the rasp and leave behind some finer uh, lines that will need to be removed. And for that, I'll quickly hit it with a card scraper that's got a little burr along the edge. And that will make tiny little shavings come off. And that, a card scraper is one of the best tools you can have if you don't already have one. It saves you an incredible amount of time in sanding and can level surfaces, lots of uses that we'll go into more other, other times here in the neighborhood. But I, after that, we go to sanding. So you can go to a power sander. A lot of times I'll use a little pa a palm sander or these cushiony uh, sanders, which someone was nice enough to give me from the Greenville, what's the? Greenville what? Woodworkers Guild in South Carolina. Yeah, so shout out to the Greenville yes, Woodworkers Guild. All right, so I'm going to use this and to, to do this work, when you're in the vise like this, you, you can take a seat, but I, I really can't with that handle there. So I'm going to stand and I need full access, access to this leg. So what I'm going to do is start out with the spoke shape at a pretty steep angle. About a 31 and a half degree angle is really where you want to be. It's an old woodworking joke. See how well that went over? Keep them coming, huh? <laughs> Keep them coming. Right. So I'm going to hold it right there and, and make a cut. Now I'm going to hold that angle in general and just, what I'm trying to do is just make a facet to establish the depth of the cut. And then I, it, I'll be leveling it. I'll be dropping the spoke shape down a little bit. So now I'm going to go a little lighter on the foot here. I'll focus a little more and I'll lift off because the foot's small, you know, you don't want to overcook it. So, so that's about right. I see I'm there to the line. Now I'm going to just almost imperceptibly change the facet angle. That's one of the nice things. Your hands are out here and you, you have a, a great control of this and you can change that angle just these little micro changes. I know you you felt that when you uh, peel the carrots. 
<laughs> but when you have two hands on it, you even more can feel that adjustment. But the name spoke shave is from actually shaving spokes for wheels and you'd sit at a shaving horse and pull toward you and just quickly change and leave these tiny little facets with great control and speed you want. Now I'll go to the other side. I'm going to hold the angle again. And you get these cute little curls that kids kids actually love to do this. So this is this is a great beginning tool to work with kids on. You can soften and shape surfaces. It's a great freehand kind of exercise. Have you ever tried this? I have not. Haven't you been itching? Behind the camera? Yes, I have, actually. <laughs> All right, uh, let me hold the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Not that much. Not tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that feels about right. So I'm, I'm going down and I'm trying to stay away from the pencil line in the middle, which I did pretty well up here, but down where it gets narrow, I, I skinned it off a little bit, but that's fine. So I want to try to just create that softening, fastening all the way across without trying to round too much and without leaving any flats. Now I can run my fingers across there and feel the facets. And this is where we'll come in to stage two. We're going to question with the spoke shape before we go on is sure. it, does it matter if it is flat or curved blade um no it doesn't it, you really with this soft of a curve you really wouldn't find a spoke shape that would have the kind of curvature this is a very subtle radius it's probably about a four inch radius by the time you're done with it so a spoke shape would not custom work for this kind of thing and um I suppose that's what they're wondering. You probably could have make your own spoke shave, custom curve it, have a very subtle curve. But the thing is, it just changes slightly as you come down to the foot. It's a little stronger at the foot. And it's nice to have that hand made look of the changing way you do it all the way down. All right, so now we're gonna move to the next stage where we've got a fine rasp. This is a Nicholson number 50. It's got a nice random cut and I'm lightly doing this and I'm dragging kind of diagonally across the piece and I'll just be changing the whole angle here. Again, removing the facets. This is, this is a light touch. Huh? You don't have to, I'm not trying to change the surface geometry too much, just Recreate. Tom, did the shakers ever employ pillowing? Um, you know, I was thinking about that. That was something that came to mind like is this a thing they did it on uh, the time I can think of is on these candle sands that we've reproduced here we have plans for when when you have those legs that sweep out they would often you have the the cylindrical column in the middle that's like a bottle and then the legs would spill out from that some were left flat on top but some they would softly radius down that's how we do it in our, our version. I like the way the curvature of the bottle carries down the top of the leg, but that would be sort of a round over, not so much a pillowing. I'm not, I'm not used to seeing it, but I'm gonna keep my eye out. Did you make that handle come on the rasp? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. 
as a matter of fact, that was on uh, Shop Night Live no, episode. I can attach the video for yeah. that. Yeah, we made this handle, ice cream scoop handles in the same way. <laughs> That's Wenge. And uh, yeah, you could. We used the ice cream scoop today for lunch. That was a few years <laughs> ago, there... probably about, what, three years ago? Yeah, well, I forget. Um, Danny's asking if instead of the rasp, would it be sa a sanding block be okay? Or is it a different? Um, I don't know. I, you could probably achieve it with a sanding block, but you'd have to do it with a fairly aggressive sanding. Uh, I just find this to be a free-handed, nice, effective way of knocking it down. And you're, you're looking at the surface and you're able to subtly reshape where you might have not given it enough. But, um, yeah, I, if you got good with a sanding block, you can do a lot of things. It just takes you a lot longer. Uh, but I like, I just like the feel of this coming down the surface. So I'm trying to sand as little as possible, honestly, on this leg. That's why I'm going to move next to filing. And in a way, these steps are going through a sanding process. We're going from a coarse kind of abrasive to a finer file all the while refining and shaping and chewing up. But it's, it's a fast process between each stage. So this stage, I'm using the coarse on now, I'll go to the finer. I can put the links to all of these tools we're oh, done. right. Yeah. All right. That feels great. Now, let's, uh, let's do a little card scraping, and then I'll show you the actual radius. It's very soft, but believe me, it's there. Now, before sanding, because I want to minimize sanding, I will card scrape. And this, this is creating, I don't know, can you see the shaving? It creates a little shaving as a result of the burr on the card scraper. If anybody says they want it, we'll link to a sharpening and using a card scraper video. Yeah, it's a short um, one. Getting some questions about consistency in the techniques as you're doing that on each of the legs. Any tips on that? Yeah, I would go through. In order to have consistency, I would go through the same step on all four legs. Uh, so in sequence. Yeah, you can. Well, yeah. Uh, sometimes that's what I'll do. I'll just I'll uh, spoke shave all the legs if you want to stay with that. If, but I'm used to it. I rather sometimes you'd think, is it worth re chucking it in there? or should I take it all the way through? But in general, in woodworking, to gain consistency with anything, you try to go through all the stages with all the parts. And if you're making a large uh, set of chairs or something, that will get you pretty good at something pretty fast. The same is true in cutting dovetails and things like that. Yeah, so you would have the legs kind of side by side. You'd be moving through all four, you'd do the one yeah, but I'm a skilled professional, and I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> no. no, I well, just, I just, uh, I think after a short mistakes. while, you start to get the feeling for when you're there. And you know what? I, this kind of thing, you almost want the human irregularity. You're not trying to achieve a machine look like a router bit went over it. You want that little subtle humanness to it. So. That's, that's fine. We're not trying to be a machine. Uh, depends whichever way you want to do it. Who asked that question? The consistency question? Yeah. Tony. Anthony. Anthony. Good question, and, Anthony. And Tony, there was another question from Tony. Not this, the one that's in the room right now, but a different Well, one. I imagine it's not. <laughs> he could just ask me right after. About making a custom scraper that would enable you to be consistent as well. Uh, you could do that. I mean, that would be a very small grind. I mean, there are lots of custom scrapers you can buy. You can buy like curved ones like this. This is way too strong of a curve. 
And to be honest, when I've used this, invariably you'll, you'll mistakenly dig in the other corner and it's just, you're like, oh, why did I use this? <laughs> but this is a cove that can work. There are lots of custom shaped card scrapers like this French curve. This is really helpful. We used it last week on the bowl. And then these are custom ground to do, uh, to scrape reading. And that's made from a table saw blade. So there's lots of options, but I don't find it worth it on this because it's just a little subtle scraping and it's very fast. And then I go to sanding. So I'm gonna try one of these pads. Feels like about 150 grit. And I'll just run it down. Do you ever have any issues with gumming up in your files? That's, I'm sorry, it's a poor way of saying it. My your files, files gumming up? Gumming up. <laughs> um, and if so, how do you clean them? That's more for a tool man. I know a lot of people like to put uh, torches on some tools if they're hard enough and can handle it. You can burn out stuff that's clogged in there and then just oh. take like a, a wire brush mm -hmm. and lightly, gently hmm. uh, brush it. Uh, but someone else can chip in on that. How do you clean your files? I'm not. Um, so once I've hit it with the 150, I'll come behind with the 220. And I'm seeing it get clear. I'm always trying to sand to clear. And now we release the leg. And that is a finished pillowed surface. I don't know if you can see it in the light, but you can see a flat surface and a pillowed surface. Ooh. Yeah, nice. You see the light, how it softer, how it doesn't reflect like evenly. See how the light just bounces off evenly here. And then here you've got a nice soft transition. So let's put one together. Let's put this table actually together. I did another side. I haven't done anything to the rails, so they look glaringly out of place, just being dead flat and offset. But I was, I'll show you another table example that could change that up pretty strongly. All right, so this is the way we assemble our table. We've got them numbered and fit this tenon into the mortise. And then I'll fit the other, the other side. And then we flip and let's put it. Did I just hit your camera? Not bad, sorry. <laughs> Not bad. I was kind of in your way. I'm sorry. All so right. uh, Ken's curious, would you pillow all sides of the legs? Yes, case? Ken, I would. I would uh, hit the other side and then the inside, but always stopping short of the joinery area so that you don't make that shoulder connection sloppy looking. All right. So here's, where is the leg I just did? Oh, here it is. It's back here on the back. So if you just look at this back leg compared to this flat one over here, but let's just look at a front where I did both legs already. So you can see, I don't know how well it shows up on the camera, but believe me, it's unbelievable yeah. when you're angle. right here. It is not awesome. No, it's, it feels awesome. I mean, it, it just changes the game. And I was thinking it, it almost feels like Danish modern furniture, you know, when you just do this little thing. I've seen some, uh, custom made like original pieces that were made over in Denmark for uh, someone nearby that it was his desk made out of teak and a lot of the elements were pillowed or just attended to in a way that you knew someone cared and pushed it to another level. It was personal and it felt great to sit and and just look at it. it. It invites you to touch it more than a straight, hard, sharp edged table. So there you have it. Are, are you um, going to be doing some pillowing in the bow front end table course? Why? What a question. Who asked that question? Yours truly. I, oh. <laughs> I just have an instinct. That I, was, I was just thinking, oh, what a well-timed question. Uh, and I have you to thank. Well, thank you, Miss Camera Lady. <laughs> Uh, before you move on to that, Stuart's asking how you would handle the top to match. 
Um, that's a great question, Stuart. Softening the bottom you know, front of the aprons, too. Have, talk about that. Well, let me show you the aprons. Yeah, that, that is a great question because it, it, you do get, when you see those legs pillowed against a flat apron, it's like, ah, no longer does this feel right. So uh, Jerry Osgood would often put like, even like the aprons would have this kind of surface out of flat, but subtle and the way it, it almost looked like it was draped down, right? So you could have it bowed and also you could have a swag at the bottom edge. And I'm gonna go into a lot of that during the bow front table course. Let me show you this bow front table. I just happen to have it right here. Oh. All right, let me just uh, set this table aside. That's smart. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it over here because it's a lower. Now it's not glued up. This is just the bones of it, but you'll be able to see another example of a pillowed leg. So here's the front drawer dividers not yet curved on this example. But check out the side, if I can keep it together. Here's the front leg, and we've got a contour, a shaped, a curved tapered leg with pillowing. And this now is over mahogany. So, and then check out the side. We've got two things going on here. We've got a bow and this swag happening on this particular table. Now our table, our original table that we'll be doing in the bow front will have a straight bottom with a, but it's going to be bowed. But we're going to do some bonus content for the neighborhood where we'll be talking about pushing it even further with swags and um, other ways of doing the door front. So check that out. Yeah, you, we start this course next Thursday, August 31st. You're now doing those on Thursday night, just after Shop Night Live at 8.15. So it's a double session. Yeah, that's yeah, going to be a fun start course. We start at 7.30 and then yeah, you're not this... really getting the full effect of, you, you get to learn how to do the uh, dovetail on a bow front drawer. Mm -hmm. so that's a next step, advanced technique. And yeah. Engineering the top and the sides. Yeah, check out if you're interested in this kind of thing. There's a full description on the website. Yeah, I actually put the link to the course uh, description right in the description below. And check this out. This is just a, a teaser of how you start with the leg. It starts as a block. This is an inch and three quarter square block of mahogany. And then it gets sawn to this nice curving taper and then pillowed to give it the full treatment. So we'll be talking about veneering and uh, laminating over a form for curved forms as well. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm psyched because the course is in the neighborhood and uh, just on our website. I'm now finally getting to a place where I don't know. It's not that I didn't like the other courses. I loved all the courses, but these are, these are in, stimulating to me because it's pushing me too and I love sharing these types of things. Do you have and the top nearby? No, no, no. And that's true of this course that we're doing right here, right now. We're doing this, this round chair course and this is really a mind bender and these guys in here would attest that it will push you to work in round. We're also going to do an online course for this chair in October. So September and October are full of two new online courses. So check those out. You don't have to be in the neighborhood to, to participate, but it sure is a good deal. Well, thank you for that. Insight. Yeah, I'm going to plug you all I can. <laughs> <laughs> He's worth it. That camera lady strikes again. <laughs> Ken says we'll be get kicked out of the neighborhood if we use dominoes instead of doing traditional mortise and tennis joinery, te te tennis, shame. tennis joinery on the table. No, of course, that's no fine. No shame. No, Ken, you know, I, the Shakers would have been domino fans. They probably would have come up with it before Festool did if they hung around long enough and they didn't. Uh, have that one little rule about non-procreation. <laughs> that, that was a little flaw in the plan, I think. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, they're no longer around. Uh, that's is fun. that it on the questions? That is all the questions that I can... Yes. yes. Well, all right. 
Thank you so much again for hanging out with us in the shop for a little while. Remember, if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, and all that good stuff. And check out our website at epicwoodworking.com where you can find all kinds of course content, links to lots of free videos, uh, shop night lives, and all that good stuff. And get on the mailing list. That's the best secret. That's the key. Be communicated so. with. Yep. All right. Well, on behalf of the Camelay and myself, thank you once again for being part of our thing and our live studio audience. <laughs> Yes. We look forward to seeing you next time right back here on Shop Night Live. Woo. Good night, everybody. Good night. That was my special request. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> I, I imagine.